What's up you guys? My name is Aubrey and this is my channel and today I want to talk about the IDLE program and the PPP but I want to talk about it in the context of scams because scams are rampant across COVID-19 relief from almost every single angle from the perspective of people applying for IDLE and PPP funds as well as people who are targeting individuals who want to apply for PPP and IDLE funds. So in this video we're going to be talking about both sides of the spectrum. We're going to be talking about the people who scammed the SBA and what ultimately ended up happening to them. And we're going to be talking about how you can protect yourself from getting scammed by somebody who wants to scam you in the process of applying for idle or PPP funds. So let's get started. All right. So let's first talk about the people who are scamming the SBA. Now, this is something that we have seen a lot over the last year. We saw it a lot over the summer of 2020. It was something that I knew was going to happen because of the fact that the idle program specifically was just far too easy to apply to. And even the PPP in some regards has been very easy to apply to as well. The problem is, is that I think it's good that these programs were relatively easy and accessible to apply to, but it's definitely a double edged sword, you know, because the ease of applications made it so that people who were just normal humans, normal business owners could easily apply for these relief funds, which is obviously a good thing. But on the flip side, it just fostered an environment for fraudulent activity. And that's really unfortunate. But sitting now in January of 2021, you know, we're seeing more and more people being prosecuted and people pleading guilty to COVID-19 relief scam schemes. For example, according to the Department of Justice, as of Friday, January 15th, a man in Austin, Texas was charged with a $5 million COVID-19 relief fraud scheme. He apparently applied and, and was approved for $5 million worth of forgivable loans, meaning loans that he never had to have paid back had he would have gotten away with this entire scheme. He was approved and he received $5 million in funding. And now, you know, sitting in January of 2021, he has been caught and he is getting charged for that. Now, this is a huge deal. I mean, $5 million worth of fraud with government money. That's a big, big charge. I mean, that's a felony charge. And so this person here will end up definitely seeing some sort of jail time or at the very least a huge fine. Another report by the Department of Justice as well had said that as of Thursday, January 21st, so just a few days ago, a man out of Washington pled guilty to a COVID-19 relief. Basically what he did was he started a company in the summer of 2020. He claimed that that business had been operating since 2017. He claimed that the business had nine employees and was making 1.5 million a year. He was approved and distributed $700,000 in funds. And sitting here today, you know, he pled guilty to that charge because of the fact that it was a fraudulent company that he created for the sole purpose of getting idle and PPP funds. But you know what? This isn't just an American problem. I mean, I've been a pretty big critic of the SBA and the IRS and just the government as a whole over the last 10 months. And the fact is, is that I don't know if what has been happening with the SBA and the IRS and these COVID relief programs is really avoidable. I mean, we're seeing the same thing in other countries as well. For example, a Toronto based newspaper published an article saying that a civil servant has been accused and is being charged with embezzling $11 million in COVID relief funds. So it seems as though this is just a problem across the board with government and government agencies that are offering COVID relief. It really is an unfortunate circumstance, it's an unfortunate situation. And I think it really does take away from something that was meant to be a good thing and turns it into a quite negative thing. And so it, it's unfortunate. And so I think it'll be interesting to see what ends up happening with these people. I mean, this is extreme examples of this, like $11 million, $1.5 million, $5 million, 700,000. That's a lot of money. And I think it's interesting to see that these people were able to successfully or almost successfully take hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars from the SBA and from the government. But the question is how many people did that on a much smaller scale? How many people fraudulently took a thousand dollars two thousand dollars three thousand dollars from the sba and to be honest i think a whole lot of people did so it will be interesting to see what ends up happening with this in the coming months and really probably in the coming years i think that this will be something that continues to be prosecuted by government agencies for quite a while all right so next is an incredibly important topic that i've been meaning to address over the last few days because it's something that i'm seeing a lot on youtube as well as just across the internet as a whole and that is people that are targeting idle applicants and ppp applicants for scams so this is like scammers 
just wanting to scam you being a person who wants to apply for COVID relief funds. Now, whenever it comes to the PPP and the EIDL program, it is incredibly, incredibly important to only apply for loans and grants through official government resources. So if you are somebody who is looking to apply for the EIDL loan program, meaning the loan that you have to pay back, this is what that screen looks like. If it doesn't look like this, if it doesn't have the sba.gov URL, this is not the correct website. It is not the correct website and you are at risk of being scammed. Additionally, the idle cash advance, meaning the portion of the idle program that does not have to be paid back, the portion of it that's considered to be free money, this is closed. If anybody on the internet right now is telling you that they can offer you idle funds, they can offer you cash advances, they know how to get it, they can get you connected with the right people, they are lying. 100% they are lying. I have spent a whole lot of time over the last you know, six to eight months talking with people who work with the SBA, who work with government groups, who are extremely well connected in the world of the IRS, the SBA, and the government. And there is no way to get into this idle targeted cash advance other than just simply waiting for the SBA to reach out to you. There's no way around it. So if there is somebody who is reaching out to you and tells you otherwise, that is a scam. And as for the PPP, make sure that you go through a reputable bank, a reputable lender. Things like Cabbage, Bluevine, Chase Bank, there are a ton of valid ways to go about applying for the PPP. I will include a link to a handful of resources that you can check out down in the description below. But if you apply for the PPP and it's not through a reputable lender that is well-established online or just well-established in the banking world, run as far as you can from that situation. You should not be doing any of these things if you are not either on a reputable bank's website or talking with a reputable bank that you know exists or if you are on the sba.gov website. I've been seeing a lot of claims on YouTube of like people who say, oh, I can help you apply for the idle loan. Here's my fee. And they charge like $100 for that. This is a scam. Like, please, please do not fall for this stuff. I mean, I've been seeing it all over the place and it's absolutely crazy. In fact, in researching some topics for this video, I saw dozens of articles of people who have been scammed by scammers in an effort to apply for idle funds. So these are people who just want to collect idle funds, either in the form of a grant, in the form of a loan, or in the form of the PPP, and they get scammed in the process. And it really, really is sad, but it's completely avoidable if you just do your due diligence, if you're aware of what you're doing. And if you think that something's too good to be true, chances are that it is. In addition to this, the SBA also has a pretty great resource on their website showing some of the scams and some of the things that they already know exist and they already know are being attempted on their SBA customers. I'll include a list to this down in the description below as well. And lastly, you know, this is something that I've talked about on this channel before, but the problem is getting worse and worse is there are people out there who are impersonating YouTubers. It's happening to me. I'm sure it's happening to other YouTubers out there as well, where I will create a video. People will be asking me questions in the comment section of that video, and there will be somebody who has my name, my profile picture, who are commenting on those comments. So for example, there'll be somebody who will comment, hey, I have this question regarding the EIDL grant. And then this fake account who's posing as me will comment and say, hey, reach out to me on WhatsApp. This is something that I've been seeing a lot. You guys have also brought it to my attention a handful of times. And my inclination is, is that if it's happening to me, if it's happening to my account, to my subscribers, it's also happening on other YouTube channels as well. And so definitely keep that in mind. You know, it's extremely upsetting. It's extremely disturbing that this stuff is going on, but the fact of the matter is it's going on and it's not going anywhere. And so in regard to my YouTube channel specifically, there is not a single bank that I'm working with. There's not a single accountant that I'm working with. So if you ever see that I'm claiming that I do that is most often and most likely a scam. Honestly though, you guys, I felt like an obligation to make this video because I do feel a personal sense of responsibility for anybody who receives idle funds and PPP funding by watching this YouTube channel. And I want to make sure that I am keeping you guys updated on all of these things that could potentially have adverse effects, whether that be you are somebody who fraudulently or are thinking about fraudulently applying for the PPP or the idle program, don't do it, it's not worth it. It's not worth the felony that will inevitably come from that sort of action. And then as far as scammers, trying to scam you, be vigilant. If something is too good to be true, it most likely is. Make sure to use your common sense to not fall for these types of things. I understand that desperation oftentimes leads to making some rash decisions, but when dealing with money, when dealing with the SBA, when dealing with potential scammers, it's incredibly important to stop 
think about what you're doing and to make sure that what you're doing is the right thing to do. And in the case of dealing with scammers, you want to make sure that you're actually on the SBA website, that you're dealing with reputable people, with reputable companies. And if you do that, you'll be good to go. With that being said, you guys, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.